Likutei Sichos, Chelik Yudzayin, Volume 17, the first Sicha for Parshas Bechukhaisai. This is a Rashi Sicha, but not a difficult one at all. In this Sicha, we're going to learn the fundamentals and really the appreciation of the concept of Torah learning, and more, most specifically, the imperative, the importance of laboring, of toiling in Torah, namely the learning the Torah in depth. Before we begin the Sicha, I would suggest that you review the Rashi, actually two Rashis, the main Rashi on which the Sicha is based, and that is both of them are in the first verse of this Parsha, Im The first Rashi is exactly on those words. The heading is Im if you go my statutes. And the second Rashi is the following one, V'es mitzvoy tishmiru, and you will keep my mitzvahs, you will safeguard my mitzvahs. Now let's just review quickly the Rashi. Rashi says in Bechokoi Setelechu, Yochel Zeu Kiyama Mitzvahs, I would think, one would be able to think that this perhaps is referring to the observance of mitzvahs. Kishu Oimer, however, when it says right afterwards in the verse, Ves Mitzvoi Sai Tishmuru, that you should keep my mitzvahs, Harei Kiyama Mitzvah Samur. So it is talking about mitzvahs there. So how how do I explain? How do we qualify what it says over here? So Rashi concludes that this is teaching us that you should Torah you should study Torah laboriously, or you should study Torah with amol with toiling in it. Okay, that is this Rashi. The next Rashi says ves mitzvah seitishmeru. So Rashi says, what is that telling us? That you should keep my mitzvahs. Have a male in potato, you should be toiling, you should um, study Torah laboriously. Almenas on condition, or for the purpose, lishmar ulekayim, in order to keep and to fulfill the mitzvahs, commission emma, like it says, that you should learn them, you should learn the words of Torah, and you should keep them to do them. So the question is, First of all, why does Rashi have to explain in the first place? In other words, why can't we just say it's referring to mitzvahs, a different category of mitzvahs? And number two, why this whole lengthy explanation, quote, you know, I would think it means this, and therefore I say no, it doesn't mean does not mean to go in the mitzvahs, because it already mentions it afterwards. Why could Rashi just say short and sweet? What does it mean? It means amelim betoira to toil to to on Torah, to work to learn Torah in depth to be laborious in Torah and that's it, and move on. Why does Rashi have to go into the whole lengthy explanation? So the answer for that is actually very simple, because you see what Rashi is is telling us is look, here. the common meaning meaning the regular basic translation of the word does indeed mean my statutes, my mitzvahs. It's a certain type of mitzvah as we'll see later in the Sicha. However, in this case, in this particular verse, that cannot be the case, not because doesn't mean mitzvahs, but because of what it says afterwards. And therefore, we have to we have to conclude that it's talking about something else. And I'm telling you, says Rashi, what is it talking about? It's talking about Shatiyu Amelim Bitoira, that you should toil, you should be laborious in Torah, you should learn Torah in death. However, see, that's understood. However, there's still some questions that remain and that need further clarification. And that is number one from where does Rashi get this? I mean, I know, of course, there's a Medrash. There is obviously a source from which Rashi gets it. But according to Pshuto Yishemikra, according to the basic meaning of the Pasuk, where is the, so to speak, imperative? Where, why are we forced to explain that what does the Chukais I mean? That it means that you should be Amelim Betoida, that you should toil, you should be laborious in Toida. And why does Rashi feel it necessary to connect Bechukais Te'lechu 
to the following statement, which he explains in the next Rashi, Ves Mitzvay Saitishmelu. What is really the imperative to connect the two and say that you sh- what it means to say is you should learn the Torah in depth in order to reach a point of observance of the Torah, of <coughs> fulfilling the Torah. Why does it, that the two have to be connected? Why can't we say this is talking about two different things? Number one, Hashem is telling us, study Torah in depth, study Torah laboriously. And number two, that you should keep the mitzvahs. Why do I have to say that they're both connected? The answer in this, the, the, the explanation for all of this is as follows. In general, we know that the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, the mitzvah of learning Torah, is indeed one of the 630 mitzvahs. Even a child who is just beginning to learn Chumash, whom Ad- Rashi is addressing, the quote, Ben Chumash Shana Lemikra, the five-year-old who is beginning to learn Torah, remember that even he says, recites every morning a blessing on the mitzvah of Torah, studying Torah. He says, Asher of you have sanctified us with your mitzvahs and commanded us the mitzvah of studying Torah. So he knows that studying Torah is a mitzvah, is included in all the mitzvahs. And therefore, when the Torah says, where the Torah is obviously adding to the just general observance of mitzvahs. How do we know it's adding? As Rashi points out, because afterwards it mentions the mitzvahs. So it must be that it's talking about a level of learning Torah which is not included in the simple, basic obligation of studying Torah. In other words, the study of Torah is, in general, an obligation. And if we hear when the Torah is adding to that obligation by saying, in addition and prior to, it's obvious that it's speaking about another level of Torah study. Now let's analyze this. It can either be speaking about another level of Torah study in quantity, in, 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 in other words, in amount of time of that person puts in, in amount of content the person learns, or it could be talking about, it can be referring to, the quality of the learning. Now, it's the, the, the truth is that it cannot be talking about the quantity. That is not an option. Why would that not be an option? Because if we think about it, what is the mitzvah of the study of Torah? What is the obligation in the, in, in, in the mitzvah of Talmud Torah? The obligation is that if somebody has time, when you have time, when you're able to, you have to study Torah. In other words, that obligation, there's no more or less to the obligation in terms of time, in terms of quantity. That obligation is a continuous obligation. Whenever such time it makes itself available, one has to study Torah. So this cannot be what the Pasik means. This cannot be what the Torah is referring to when it says, quote, and we concluded that it means that you should add in the study of Torah, in the study of of, of this particular mitzvah of Talmud Torah. So it obviously means an increase, an addition in the quality of the mitzvah. In the quality of the mitzvah, that's where we come to, that's where Rashi concludes that we're talking about amelim batayra, that you should work hard, that you should toil in Torah, above and beyond that which is included in the basic observance of the mitzvah. And therefore, this is the meaning here. Just to explain, let's take an example. Let's say the mitzvah of putting on tefillin. The Torah says it should be a sign on your hand. Now, whether one keeps the mitzvah of the, the tefillin on for one minute or for one hour or for the entire day, if one can keep their minds clear and pure, their thoughts pure and fully concentrated on the tefillin, meaning that when they're allowed to do it according to halacha. But that mitzvah will not change. It's not that you're getting another mitzvah, that you're fulfilling another part of the obligation. It's just a continuous fulfillment of the same mitzvah of, quote, putting it on your hand. Likewise, when you study Torah, when we're talking about the quantity, we're talking about the time that you give, that you allow to study a Torah, that is a continuous obligation. Every moment you have, that you have free, that you have available, you need to study Torah. However, the level and the manner in which you study Torah, that already differs. 
That is what Rashi is referring to. And that's what forced Rashi to explain here that we're talking about not the study of Torah, stam, meaning the regular obligation to study of Torah because that's already included in the mitzvah, but rather something which is above and beyond the mitzvah. That's above and beyond the mitzvah. And therefore Rashi concludes that we're talking about amelim batayra, that you have to toil, you have to be laborious, you have to learn in depth. That's what the Torah is telling us, that that's what you should do. However, a question arises, and here, is, here it is. If that's the case, it seems that the order in the verse seems to be a little mixed up. You see, what is really the normal process, the normal order of things. First, you learn on a basic elementary level to know, quote, what to do, to know the mitzvahs, and only after that do you proceed, do you go to the next level and start learning in depth, and you take it to the next level of understanding, a, a deeper level. But over here, it seems that it's, that the Pasuk, the Torah, is telling us first about learning in depth, and only then does it tell us this mitzvah say tishma that you should keep my mitzvahs, which obviously, as we already stated, includes A, the mitzvah of learning Torah, and B, by virtue of the fact that you have to fulfill the mitzvahs means that you have to have learned a basic a basic uh, amount, a basic uh, on a basic level in order to know what to do. And therefore, See, if we would learn that 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 Bichokoy refers to the regular observance of mitzvahs, then we can say, okay, you you you. The, I'm sorry. If we would say Bichokoy Satelechu means the regular study of Torah, then the order would seem to make sense. You study Torah, and then you keep the mitzvahs. You study Torah, you know what to do, and therefore you keep the mitzvahs. Right? You know how to keep the mitzvahs. You know what you're supposed to do. But here, that was saying that it's going on. It's referring to a deeper level of study of Torah then the order is wrong. And this was what forced Rashi, this was what put, um, uh, compelled Rashi to explain that when it says, it's really telling us that even when you study in depth, the ultimate purpose of it is not just that you should study and understand it on a deeper level and then leave it at that. Rather that it should lead to a deeper level of observance, that it should lead to a de- greater level of adherence to the mitzvahs. For example, when one takes a mitzvah that you learn in Shulchan Aruch, you learn it, you understand it, you know what to do. But then you, you research it, and then you analyze it, and you learn it in depth, and you learn it with all the sources, you get a different appreciation of it. Now you're able to take not only the study, not only the understanding of the mitzvah, but because of that, as a result of that, you're able to now take it to the next level in observance. You are mahader in the mitzvah. You do it with extra diligence, with extra beautification of the mitzvah, with extra stringencies, because now you can appreciate the mitzvah much better. Now let's take all of this, and now that we understand what compelled Rashi to explain the way he explained it, and what it's talking about. Let's now take it on a deeper level, a little more uh, according to Chassidus and understand this better. You see, it's true indeed that the reason why we ha- we were forced to, we were compelled to explain the words that it means not the observance of mitzvah, but it means the study of Torah, is because what it says afterwards, because it says, you should adhere to my mitzvahs. So that's what compelled us, as Rashi said, and as we pointed out very well. However, because every single thing in the Torah is precise, every single thing in the Torah is exact, and we know that the Torah is Torah or Torah that gives off light. It illuminates everything. Everything is clear. So we must conclude, we must say that the fact that the Torah expresses the study of Torah with the word Bechukoisa, uses this term, has a special connection to this type of learning, to this type of Torah study that the Torah is demanding of us. Let's take a moment to example, to examine what Bechukoisa is or chukim, what they mean. Now, in general, we know that there are three types of mitzvahs. Usually, we refer to, we have the three types of mitzvahs. We have edus, which are testimonials, which are, let's say, for example, keeping Shabbos, that it testifies to the fact that we believe 
uh, that Hashem created the world and He rested on the seventh day. You have the testimony of Tefillin that 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 is 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 an, a sign, as it says, quote, a sign that the, you are connect or we are connected to Hashem. Then you have the festivals that they represent a certain events that happen and the testimonies they believe in Hashem's miracles. And we're thanking Him for it. Then you have the Mishpatim. The Mishpatim are those laws, as the Talmud says, quote, even had the Torah has not been given, we would have been able to come to these conclusions that these are normal morals and ethics that every human being should abide by, and they have a logical and, and, and moral uh, rationale. However, then there are Chukim. What are Chukim? Notice the word Chukim as in Bechukosai. Chukim are statutes. As the Talmud coins it, the, the quote, the decrees of the king. As Hashem says, I decree the decree and I established a statue and you have no business, so to speak, thinking about it or double, double guessing it. Meaning, you don't understand it, you may not understand it and you still have to observe it. The question is, why is this the term for this type of mitzvah? Why is this the term, chukim, for the class of mitzvah that is not understood according to human rationale? We know that Hebrew is not like a conventional language that, you know, was kind of, so to speak, agreed upon. Think about it for a second. Let's say the word apple. Is there really inherently anything in A-P-P-L-E that means apple? No. It's almost as if like an agreed upon uh, a word that apple, when you say apple, it's a symbol that it refers to this particular type of fruit. When you say bed, it refers to a bed. When you say chair, it refers to a chair. But there's nothing inherent in the word chair, in the word bed, in the word apple that connects to that object. Whereas in Hebrew, Lashon HaKodesh was designed by Hashem, was made by Hashem. It's not just a human convention. And therefore, every single word has an inherent connection to what it describes, to what it depicts. Thus, when we say these mitzvahs are chukim, because the word chuka, the word chukim comes from the word chakika, which means to engrave. Now, what is it about engraving? If you think about it, when one wants to communicate something, one wants to express words, there are three ways to do it. You can do it either by speech. And as the Talmud says, speech is a very, very minor action. Think about it. In speech, you only move your lips very, very small action evolve. The next level higher is writing, which has a greater permanence, obviously, and it has a greater effect, and it even has a legal effect. You sign your name, you write a document. It's a lot more than just saying something. That's already considered, according to the Talmud, a complete action. You wrote something, you left an imprint, you left a mark on a piece of paper, on a piece of parchment. However, when you engrave something, that already involves a lot more and a much extra measure of effort, of toiling, of energy that has to be put in in order to come to that point where you've engraved the letters, you've recarved them out because it takes, whether it's in wood, whether it's in stone. And this is the reason why those mitzvahs which we cannot understand, those mitzvahs which are beyond our rationale, are referred to as chukim. Because they're similar to that. They are not easy. They are difficult. It requires an extra measure of energy and effort in order to observe them. You see, something we understand, something we appreciate, it's exciting. It comes already on its own, so to speak. You're able to do it. There's, there's, there's the built-in energy that's there in anything that we like to do that we're happy about doing. Something that doesn't make sense, something that's beyond of what makes sense, even though we want to do it, but we're, we're, we're doing it almost like in a, in a sluggish, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a forcible way. We're forcing ourselves to do it. And this is why the learning in a manner of depth in a manner of that's required, that's being demanded in this pasuk is called the chakiga, is called chakiga, because we're learning in a way that it's going to engrave it in our hearts. You see, think about it. If I learn something in the Torah and I understand it, I know what it says. Why the need to continue further? Why the need to analyze? 
doesn't that isn't that how's the old adage go if it ain't broke don't fix it why am i bothering with it i got it i understood i understand what the shulchan aruch wants for me i understand what the verse in the torah wants i understand what rashi says why am i continuing further why am i going deeper into it that is like a hakika i am engraving i am digging deeper but that also creates a special phenomenal result which is that it engraves it in the heart it literally embeds it into the heart and even if god forbid someone's heart is like quote like a heart of stone even then or especially then because the person is toiling so hard because the person sets their mind and their efforts and their energies to try to understand it better and deeper that melts away the stone of the heart that brings it to a point that the person is able to understand it is able to appreciate it now it's true that when one studies in general, one needs to understand. Meaning any Torah study requires, especially Torah Shabal Peh, the oral law, requires that one understands it. However, what the Torah is telling us over here is not just to understand it on a basic level, but what Hashem wants our connection to the Torah to be in a way of Hakika. Hashem wants us to go deeper and to try to understand it and analyze it on such a deep level that it becomes like a chukah. The more one endeavors to understand the deeper the Torah, the more one puts in the effort in their mind to analyze and go deeper in the learning of Torah, the more one comes to appreciate that as much as I understand, I realize that the Torah is beyond my understanding. In other words, the more you dig into Torah, the more you learn it in depth, the more you connect to the ultimate Chachma of the Torah, the wisdom of the Torah. Now, the more you connect is the, to the wisdom of the Torah means the more you're connecting to the wisdom of Hashem. Hashem is infinite. His wisdom is infinite. So really what happens is the le- less you understand, the more you think you understand. The more you understand in Torah, the more you learn. The deeper you go, the more you realize how much it's beyond your understanding. But that's through the appreciation and the connection is that comes that comes that, that comes with the depth of learning Torah, the appreciation of connectivity to Hashem and how it's limitless and how it's infinite and how there's so much more to go on and on and on and on. So basically in simple words, when a person thinks that, oh, he really got it and he knows it, he gets it that's really when he needs to begin to study deeper to realize that the Torah is beyond. Because if you think you get it, that means that you're really lacking in the depth of the Torah. You're really lacking in the true connection to the Torah that only comes through toiling and putting in an effort in studying deeper and deeper in the Torah. And this leads to the observance that even, remember we said, that Rashi says, the ultimate of this is that it leads to observance in the mitzvahs. That means if it just stays with and remains with, quote, the deeper study of Torah, studying Torah on a deeper level, that's not it. That, that's not the ultimate. The Torah says that that has to lead to ves mitzvah that this brings to a point that even the mishpatim, even those mitzvahs which we quote, we do understand, which we do appreciate, even those mitzvahs, we connect to them on a level of chukah, that we connect to them on an infinite level, not on a limited human level of understanding.